Uh, am I audible? Yes, now we can see your presentation. Yes, you can start. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, mm -hmm. we can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so first of all, I would like to thank the organizers uh, for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to present. Um, so the my talk is uh, going to be based on uh, our work on uh, our work titled What to Learn from Few Visible Transition Statistics, authored by uh, Pedro Harunari, myself, Matteo Politani, and Edgar Rolden. I would also like to uh, bring to your notice that there is another work in the same line by Vandermeer, Ertel, and Seifert. Uh, one can also look at it for, uh, uh, for better understanding. Okay, so now moving on to the uh, background of our work. So in uh, our day-to-day -day life, we observe um, the systems which are very complex in nature with high degrees of freedom. And it's very difficult for us to understand these systems. But uh, there's a certain class of systems among them, uh, which can be, uh, they can be physic uh, physical, uh, chemical or biological systems, which can be uh, understood using a Markovian framework. So for example, here we can have, uh, we can see a network where we have the internal states and the transitions among them. And the, the point is that in this network, we need to, uh, have the complete information about the internal states. But, uh, but and if we have that information, we can predict the thermodynamical properties of such systems. But uh, most of the experimental apparatuses that we, uh, uh, we see, uh, we have in our, are limited in, uh, uh, in detecting this and probing the systems. And they are at most going to see some few visible transitions in this, uh, whole network and uh, the whole of the uh, the internal states and the transitions are completely hidden and we, uh, a few transitions can only be few visible transitions can be observed for example in case of a molecular motor uh, we can uh, see that uh, uh, for uh, for example in this experiment we can see that uh, the small molecular motors are taking vesicles on the tracks. So the only information here is the trans translocation of these motors on the track. So that is uh, the few visible transitions that are uh, being able, we are being able to observe. So in this uh, scenario, our question is that our motivation of our work is that how one can use this transition information to make inferences about dynamical, thermodynamical, and biochemical properties of such systems. So imagine that uh, you have an observer who is uh, uh, recording the time in a stopwatch and is looking at this few visible transitions. So here the black, uh, black trajectory that you can see is the complete trajectory when we have all the internals, internal states visible. But here we can only see only the blue and the uh, blue transitions. Uh, that are visible to us, and we can record the time which is uh, which it takes to uh, move from one visible transition to another. And th from this, we can have a uh, 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 time series uh, for, for this particular trajectory, which is a kind of a visible uh, time series, visible uh, time series of visible transitions. Where uh, so for such kind of uh, trajectory from statistical, uh, such kind of time series, we can have certain uh, statistical quantities that we can compute just from uh, this kind of uh, time series information. So one such is that uh, the if there are, uh, the, what is the time it, uh, taken for uh, between two successive transitions, uh, say put, uh, chosen transitions, say Li and Li plus one, uh, given that the, 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 these two transitions uh, happen. So then we have the conditional frequencies that we can compute that if there is a particular transition, what is the probability of observing the next transition to be Li plus one? Or we can have uh, the frequency of the trans transitions uh, itself. For example, what is the transition of observing plus kind of uh, transition? Okay, so for, for example, in our uh, molecular motor, it's just meaning that the forward transition uh, 
uh, so, so that kind of information we can just uh, compute from this time series analysis. Now, in order to, um, we, we, would, we would also like to um, uh, compute um, the, the analytical expressions for uh, such quantities. And uh, for example, here we have a Markov network, four state Markov network, where all, the, uh, all these states and transitions are not visible to us. Only the transitions that are visible are the magenta lines and uh, magenta arrows. And uh, what we, uh, the main purpose here is to find the time it takes to, uh, to observe a particular transition, okay? So that is like a first transition time problem that we are trying to solve. So we already know about first passage time problem. And so here we are trying to map this first transition time problem into a first passage time problem by uh, reorienting this uh, transitions that we observe here, uh, the visible transitions into sinks. And then actually we get a more extended network, uh, an auxiliary network where we have the sinks, uh, uh, sinks S1 and S2. So uh, in case of the, if we had known, known the whole network and uh, then we can, we could have used just the uh, master equation here and we could have solved for the, uh, the probabilities and from there we could have computed the thermodynamic quantities. But uh, since in our case, that is not so. So, uh, so how to uh, go about um, computing when we have few visible transitions. So in that case, we have this uh, uh, extended stochastic matrix where we have uh, this uh, this uh, blue part, which is the uh, survival matrix. That is, if you are in this uh, um, region, you will just like the uh, the terminology of a specific time problem. You will be you will survive and you'll not get into the sinks. But uh, the main thing which we will try, which we we were trying to compute here, is the what is the first passage time to reach the sink. So if we, uh, for what is the time uh, to reach the sink, which is equivalent to saying that what is the time that it went through this trans transition. So uh, this is, this uh, has been uh, inspired. Uh, this kind of uh, methodology is inspired by the paper by Sekimoto and uh, Hill. And uh, so from this uh, quantities, and one more thing I would, I would like to mention that we have a special notation here that uh, we have, the, if we have say transition L equals to one to three, so then this double bra will represent the source of the uh, transition and the double ket will represent the sink uh, or rather we can say the target of the transition, okay? So using this uh, framework, we can compute the joint probabilities that there is an intertransition time uh, that falls within T and T plus DT. And we have uh, a transition Li plus one, next visible transition Li plus one, given that we have observed a transition Li. So, and uh, we can also compute the conditional probability of the next observed transition, uh, given that Li ha has occurred. Uh, and using these two quantities, we can also, we can compute the intertransition time probability density, which is uh, here we just uh, using the base theorem and, uh, and getting to this expression. So I'm not going into the details of how we compute uh, these quantities, but uh, this is like uh, by solving the first passage time problem for the extended metrics. So then uh, we can also co compute the probability that a transition from a time series is L. So that these are the different statistical properties that we can extract by uh, solving the problem, solving the, uh, the master equation for the extended uh, uh, stochastic metrics. Now, moving on to, um, we here we have this transition statistics uh, for a ATP driven motion uh, of molecular machine. So here we have uh, the chemical coordinate and the position coordinate, and along the position uh, we we are not uh, we cannot see uh, these transitions, this chemical conformational changes in this uh, in the uh, um, during the 
um, the motion of the molecular machine. But the only thing we can see is that the, uh, the forward movement of the molecular machine and backward movement of the molecular machine. So this is uh, given by precisely by four to one and one to four. These are the forward and the backward uh, transitions that forward hopping and backward hopping of the molecular machine. So from here we can see that uh, for um, the for the case of a system which is uh, uh, repeated has have, uh, for repeated transitions that is uh, if you have say a transition for one and you want to uh, compute the probability densities for such uh, events where we have four one and again a four one uh, so the null time probability density is zero because uh, because uh, there is no possibility that if you have to you have to go through the network before you come to this four to one transition and um, and uh, in case of uh, our repeat, uh, alternated transitions, that is not so. There is a high chance that after a four to one transition, you can have a one to four transition, and therefore there is a uh, significant probability density uh, for uh, this kind of null event, uh, null time event. Okay, so uh, so these uh, these quantities can also be uh, predicted from the uh, from these quant uh, the quantities that we have computed, and. Uh, so they, they uh, match very well. So now, uh, after going into the transition statistics, uh, the statistical properties of the system, now we move on to uh, the to the to the uh, thermodynamic properties of such system. How can we infer the thermodynamic properties of a system from a, a visible uh, net uh, transition? Uh, trajectory. So here we have the visible transition trajectory, uh, where, where the visible transitions that we can see, and uh, uh, we have to take care when we do a time reversal, uh, because in this case, uh, when we have a time reversal, not only the order of the uh, order has completely changed, we also see a flip in the transitions. So the the back the backward transition now becomes a forward transition and also there is a uh, there is a time uh, uh, there is also a time translation which we can observe so now for this uh, forward uh, trajectory of uh, for the forward visible trajectory uh, rather we can see uh, we can compute the probability of uh, this forward trajectory from the joint uh, the 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 con uh, the uh, conditional probabilities and also the the, the boundary term and also uh, we can compute the reverse trajectory probability of a reverse trajectory in a similar fashion and uh, from this we can uh, say that uh, we can say that if we have the if we compute the so basically entropy production is the um, irreversibility uh, is the signature of the irreversibility in the system, and therefore uh, this uh, the the distance the kullback lidler distance between the two uh, the forward trajectory probability densities and the backward trajectory probability density would uh, uh, will hold this irre irreversibility signature, and that we uh, say to be the stationary visible rate of entropy production. So if we had the whole of the um, um, trajectory that we have observed here, in that case, we, we could have computed the uh, stationary rate of entropy production uh, from the kullback lidler divergence of the whole transition status, uh, the whole probability of the trajectory. And um, uh, but uh, uh, so uh, so this uh, this is done by uh, in the paper by Edgar Rodin and John, uh, and John M. Parondo. And uh, uh, and but here there is a point that when we have uh, this uh, the whole trajectory, so we are actually in, uh, involved with more number of random variables in our system. But uh, since we are we are uh, looking at a very uh, a subset of the trajectory, we can kind of kind of subset of the trajectory. So in that case, the the we can say that. Uh, the sigma L, uh, that is the stationary uh, visible rate of entropy production, will be less uh, than the sigma, uh, the stationary rate of entropy production that we can compute. Um, we, there is another way of computing the stationary rate of entropy production that uh, if we know the just the whole network and we know the transition statistics and the probabilities uh, of being in these different uh, states, then from there uh, we can also compute the total entropy production for uh, the steady state. 
now from uh, these uh, uh, quantities uh, solving this uh, of um, this uh, using this uh, the pro the conditional probabilities we can see that uh, that the sigma l that is the the visible entropy production rate at uh, rate is uh, has two contributions one is sigma l and the other is sigma t sigma l is the contribution from the sequence of transitions and sigma t is the contribution from the intertransition times and uh, the intertransition times has this quantity which is the uh, cool black leibler divergence between the intertransition times Okay, so uh, so now if we focus on the uh, on a uh, on a particular special case where we have only uh, a pair of transitions visible which are visible that is uh, the transition say for example four to one and one to four is visible only one single current is visible in that case uh, we see that uh, if we uh, compute the sigma l and sigma t since uh, the plus minus uh, in the time reversed case uh, it becomes uh, the order becomes neither it's not the order uh, becomes uh, reversed but also the transitions themselves get reversed so then uh, this quantities become zero and we see that our sigma l and sigma t they are only dependent on the rep repeated intertransition time statistics okay uh, so intertransition time statistics and also the frequencies of the successive transitions Okay, so from uh, this uh, the study, uh, next we want to uh, see uh, compute for a particular example where we have a single uh, single transition that is visible. In that case, we we have computed the uh, the intertransition times uh, for repeated transitions and and for alternated transitions, and here we see that the entropy production. Uh, uh, rate for the mm, the exact one is uh, given by the black line and the sigma l and sigma uh, l simulations the gillespie simulations and the uh, the, the the total uh, visible entropy production rate they match and there is a contribution of sigma l uh, in that and that is exactly matching with the estimation from the thermodynamic uncertainty relation. And uh, that is uh, understood because we, we, we could see that sigma L actually is a product of the current and the affinity uh, of uh, that network. Okay, so from there we can uh, we can say that that is why we can uh, have a correlation between the two. And and as and uh, therefore the the car uh, when the system is in a stall condition they don't predict the entropy production rate but uh, the sigma t which is uh, the intertransition times they have the signature of the entropy production rate even in the stall conditions as you can see here that by the changing the bias parameter we don't see any effect in the sigma t but th there's a contribution from that Yes. So, uh, in case of ring, uh, ring networks, that is uh, networks where we have uh, topology like this, uh, we we can uh, we see that the sigma l, um, sigma t has, uh, as you can see here, we have taken only one visible transition, uh, so we, it will depend on the repeated transition statistics, and uh, and we we can see that they exactly match, and that is uh, we we can understand that. So uh, so in that case, sigma t has no contribution, and the uh, the contribution is completely from the sequence of transition contribution, that is sigma l, and uh, and and also the. Uh, estimation from the thermodynamic uncertainty relation also gives the same and sigma t has uh, no transition uh, no contribution now let's look at few uh, few molecular machine models where we have um, uh, where, where we can apply uh, these uh, studies so here we have this dining ring model where we uh, so we have one cycle and we can see that as we increase the uh, concentration of ATP there is an increase in the entropy production rate that is as as it's taking more and more ADP, ATP and uh, moving uh, the system is dissipating more compared to as we increase the concentration of ADP. 
Now moving on to the kinesin multicyclic model. So we, here we have a molecular motor, a transport motor, which has two cycles. So in the uh, in contrary to the previous case, here the forward and the backward both actually take uh, energy uh, ATP uh, to uh, to transduce energy into mechanical movement. And but since there is a symmetry between uh, the two cycles, the forward and backward. Uh, we see that uh, that uh, the, the repeated transitions are exactly uh, the, the the inter transition time for the repeated transitions have exactly same uh, distribution, but that is not the case in general for multicyclic uh, models. So uh, so from here uh, we can also compute the the inter the the distance between the kudak leibniz distance between the alternated transitions. And uh, we can also see the entropy production uh, uh, since there is no contribution from sigma t. So the uh, the entropy production at the uh, stall uh, situations uh, they uh, become uh, zero. So, uh, they uh, vanish. And uh, so uh, and uh, we also see that as we increase the ATP, uh, the entropy production rate increases, and it has no effect on the ATP concentration. Now we move on to another part uh, there. Uh, so this was mostly, this was involved with the repeated transition statistic. Now, what about the alternated transition, uh, uh, inter-transition inter transition, uh, times uh, for alternated transitions? So uh, here we have, a, we, we consider molecular machines because uh, see in molecular machines, there are certain molecular machines like ribosome, um, RNA polymerase, which have uh, this, um, whose tracks are uh, heterogeneous in nature. And this heterogeneity uh, uh, also affects the, their, the, the rate of transitions that uh, are also involved in this uh, the translocation movements. So here we can see a track such track where we have a uh, kind of monomer when the molecular motor is on this track, we have this set of rates. And uh, if we have a, a, a another kind of monomer B, in that case, we have a different set of rates, uh, which has a, a Yeah, I, I think Anvesha is offline now. Um, no, I check. Hello. Oh, hello. Oh, yes. Anvesha. Yeah, where have I lost you? And now, now I can hear you. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah. Which slide uh, have I lost you? You were the the non-repetitive sequence of the stepping motor. Okay. Okay, thank you. So, uh, so this uh, case where we have, we can introduce... At the moment, you're not sharing the slide. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. I will just share the slide. Yes, it's it, this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so... We were talking about the uh, disorder in the track. So we can introduce disorder into the track by the rates, uh, through the rates, uh, by having a different set of rates for a different kind of monomer uh, on the track. And we could have uh, the uh, distribution of this monomers on the track. Uh, we can have that also as a disorder parameter. So, um, so if we, look at the results uh, so we see that uh, in case of um, when we in increase the heterogeneity of the rates uh, uh, between the two kinds of uh, monomer a and b as we increase the heterogeneity there is an increase in the 
uh, distance between the pullback library distance between the two distributions for the alternated transitions. But the repeated transitions have no signature of that. Uh, and uh, in case of as we increase as we change the probability of the monomer on the on the track. Uh, we can see that uh, th there is a th there is a non monotonic behavior of the um, of the repeat and the alternated transitions uh, distance between the alternated transitions uh, and we can ha have the two cases on the two sides which represent the homogeneous case where we have either a monomer a or a monomer b and uh, so from uh, from these uh, studies we can say that the degree of disorder uh, is uh, there is a signature of the um, signature uh, we can get about the degree of disorder in such systems uh, from um, the alternated transitions. Okay, so now I would like to come to the summary. And uh, so for uh, the broad class of stationary Markov processes, we can derive exact analytical results for condition and condition probabilities of occurrences of successive transitions. Uh, we can measure the intertransition times, uh, uh, which are crucial for thermodynamic inference. And uh, we can uh, see that repeated transition frequencies uh, and intertransition times contain the signature about the irreversible and the alternated transitions do not contribute to entropy production estimates, uh, but their statistics provide a means to identify the presence of disorder in hidden state space. So I would like to conclude my talk and thank you everyone. Thank you uh, for uh, her talk to Anusha Dutta. Thank you, Anusha. Now I see some question in chat. Oh yeah, it's a long one. If you can see or I can. Yes, I can see. Okay. Uh, yeah. What is the connection between your decomposition of entropy production and decomposition proposed in the previous article inferring broken detail balance in the absence of observable currents? Uh, um, sorry, I should have referred this paper. Is the current uh, decomposition uh, a generalization of the decomposition of that article? Uh, in that article, the introduction was stated due to contributions, one solely to trajectories and another solely from waiting time distributions. So, um, so we can say that uh, in, sorry. So in that uh, particular case, we have not taken the inter-transition times between the repeated uh, transitions. So that is a factor which has not been considered in that uh, particular study. Yeah, that's what I can say. Repeated and alternated transitions. Yeah. And are there any questions? Oh, okay, Naruha Oka. Yeah, please ask. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yes, thank you for your inter interesting talk. Um, my question is, so um, is it possible that C theta capital L is um, identically vanishes, although the total system is um, totally out of equilibrium? Uh, sigma, uh, which sigma are you talking about? Um, sigma? Sigma Sigma capital L. Capital L, okay. Uh, sigma L, and can you repeat your question again? Um, is it possible that in some, uh, is there any cases where um, Sigma L totally vanishes, although the whole system is out of equilibrium? Yes, uh, so uh, so Sigma L, uh, so Sigma L has a contribution from Sigma L and Sigma T. So Sigma T uh, could be uh, zero, uh, in cases where uh, we have ring ring kind of networks. So in that case, we can have zero mm -hmm. if the system is out of equilibrium. Okay. And uh, sigma L could be zero in cases where there is no current uh, in the system. Uh, so in such cases, uh, we can have a situation where both the quantities can tend to zero. Mm, so do you mean there's no current in the system? Is, isn't it just equilibrium? 
Ah, yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, wait, let me just uh, think about it. Um, in our case, uh, sigma L. Yes, that's true. Uh, in case of uh, sigma L to be zero, that will mean equilibrium. But uh, we are, uh, if we are looking at a particular single transition, um, that could be uh, uh, zero. Uh, but the other transition uh, yeah. could be uh, non-zero. So in that case, uh, we could miss that particular behavior. So in, case, yeah. of, in yeah. case of ring network that we can conclude that because in case of ring network, because the current is same in each of the edges. So if yeah. there is one transition, which is zero, then all the transitions, uh, then mm -hmm. the current to all the edges should, have, should, have, should be zero. Uh, uh, but, uh, but for a complex network, which is multi-cyclic network, in that case, uh, a particular transition, uh, if that has a current zero, that will not mean that uh, the whole system is in equilibrium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can understand. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think there are some things in chat. Some comments. And are there any questions? I think. Is... Sorry, I, I added a comment, but it's a bit long. You, you can read later. There is a question by Tarek. Maybe can this. A two state system with no current, but far from equilibrium, either because it is a transient or because its transient rate change with time. In this case, when sigma t v zero. Mm -hmm. So I cannot comment on this for till with the work we, we have done. So this, I cannot comment on this point. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think uh, thanks again, Anvesha, for uh, your very nice talk. And we go to next speaker. Okay. Uh,